So, what is going on, everybody? <clears throat> Kamusta kayo lahat? Wala sa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, or wherever the heck you are on the planet. This is your one and only JOAT, the place to be for any niche, every genre, and all generations. I'm your master of ceremony, D to the E to the L R O, aka JDR, aka the extraordinary introvert. So, what it do? everyone we are back once again another week another recording another week another published episode it feels good to do this again after that long hiatus that i had the past month it feels good to be back on air on the camera with you guys once again so before we start uh happy bts meal day i guess um as of this recording uh it's friday so it's day one of the bts meal so if y'all got your uh, orders, congrats. Um, pero sa mga army dyan, you know, uh, sana wag po tayo mapikon because there are a lot of memes, there are a lot of jokes, and I can see so many triggered army stands. Uh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> pero, you know, wag lang tayo mapikon. Do know that we love y'all. We love those boys in South Korea. But let's try to just chill, relax, and not have any personal attacks but yeah hopefully y'all are enjoying your bts meal and by the time this episode is up hopefully i also get uh, to try that out myself but if you guys know me by now i ain't an army i am a certified yuena and i'm a certified revel love i'm sure this guy's like what the hell is this guy talking about why is he going <laughs> all korea boo on me well don't worry my man we won't be talking about k-pop in fact, we're going to be talking about something very different and something a lot more relevant. Well, equally relevant. So, uh, let's get to it. Um, so, guys, quick question. Isn't it difficult to transition, you know, from your peaceful, uh, pretty quiet, chill life in the province to the hustle and bustle of the noisy city? I mean, we have a lot of busy cities such as Tokyo, uh, LA, Paris, London. Uh, of course, New York, and the Metro Manila is no different. So, I'm sure Mahirap no, and I'm sure this guest over here can relate. But uh, we have what we have here is a man who, you know, not just survived but he thrived, man. I mean, imagine from being down south in the province all the way here to the noisy streets of QC. Um, and to see both of us being batchmates and graduating, that's like a major accomplishment on his end. So, uh, to all my Provinciano listeners out there listening, if you want to start anew in uh, this vibrant city here in the NCR, anything is possible. Don't let those naysayers and doubters say, no, you can't do it. Of course, that is not true. Anyone can accomplish certain goals and dreams so as long as you put the mind, heart, and pre preparation for it. And I'm sure this guy uh, has a lot more tips and pieces of advice on how to thrive in this chaotic <laughs> but uh, harmonious city, if you will. You know, the irony of it all. But that's what Manila's all Girl. about. So without further ado, let's give it up for Mr. Miko Arasid, everybody. Hello guys, it's a yeah. pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, Jake. I'm sorry for postponing the last two times. Work happened, so like... Yes. But now I'm here. Yep, I Hello, know Jake's the feeling. viewers. Yep, I know the feeling because I've been busy myself. I had that pretty long hiatus. So, we're just happy to be back here. And yeah, those Jake viewer, Jake's viewers, by the way, uh, our fandom is known as the Del Bros and Sisters. Oh, and Sisters. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the Del Bros and Sisters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember. But yo, um, what's up? What's up, man? Like, how's it going? 
It's been two years. Things have been. <laughs> it has been two years, Jake. The last yeah. time I saw you was probably during graduation. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw you the last time for graduation. Oh yeah. Oh, um, yeah. things were like pretty messy. We were handing out grad picks to people. We couldn't really say. Yep. But I still have yours. I think if I didn't see you, somewhere around here, in my messy room. I know I have. So yours. The next time that I see you, <laughs> I have to give yours. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. And you know it's crazy. And our previous guest also mentioned this last week, but we were the last batch, man. We were the last batch for all this craziness happened. True. Yeah, let that sink in for a moment. <laughs> yeah, we're actually the last batch to have like a graduation, a blue roast, a mm-hmm. bonfire. Yeah. Holy cow! You're right. Yep. Yep. Same. But I do hope we're wrong, though, because, you know, the succeeding batches, they deserve to celebrate. They deserve to they do, they do. have their own moments. And uh, to batch 2020 onwards, it's going to happen, okay? Don't tell, or don't let those doubters say, nah, it's not going to happen anymore. It's too late. Uh, syempre naman, uh, we're going to find a way. So, yeah, your time is coming. <laughs> Here, up, my guys. Yep. Uh, so, um, Miko, without further ado, I guess... You know, let's introduce. You can introduce yourself a little bit to some of my viewers. Yeah, uh, no problem. Of course, now yours. I got buddy. you. All right. So, hello. What's up, Dobros and sisters? I'm Miko Arasid. I am Jake's batchmate. I am an AB interdisciplinary studies graduate with tracks in management and communications. I am currently an associate for S and P Global, um, specifically. The market intelligence division Whoa. under logistics. So, um, yeah, uh, I am originally from Cagayan de Oro. Um, yep. I transferred here in 2015 for mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. And when I'm not in Ateneo, I live with my dad in Alabama. Yeah. Um, but the, the rest of the time, I lived in the dorm. Mm-hmm. So I was practically late for all of my classes. <laughs> yep. Oh, no wonder, man. No wonder. I mean, the first thing that came to mind when I hear you talking all, Oi, taga South to. And rightfully so. Yeah. Like, when you mentioned, oh, you, you resided a bit in Alabang. I guess that's yeah. where the, the coastal southern voice came from. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yep. Just depends on how south you're trying to go, you know? Either uh-huh. south in uh-huh. Alabang or south in Mindanao. I got you. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. So, um, crazy, no? Like, having not one, but two or three places to reside in uh yeah. Manila. like how is it though like moving uh in and out you know back in your college life was it hassle was it a f- fun adventure uh tell me more about it man uh so i practically lived in the dorm like for most part um what happened was my dad would come visit me on the weekends mm-hmm. so we'd go out to get food but during long weekends if i got the chance i'd go home so I'd bring a couple of clothes only because most of my clothes were would be in the dorm. And then yeah. I would take them with me to Alabang. And then I have a room there for myself that's uh, practically not used up until now because I am actually living here full time. So yeah, that's how it went. Um, it was either I would take the P2P, the one going from Katip to um, Greenbelt, and then mm-hmm. another one going to Greenbelt to Alabang and my dad would pick me up. Or... He would drive all the way to QC, yeah, uh, Loyola Heights, and then he'd pick me up and then we drive back. Mm, that's interesting. That's that interesting. It. Yeah, and it's also good to know that uh, you weren't necessarily alone the whole time. Like just the fact that you have extra support from family and close relatives. That's actually yeah. You know, if anything, it must have made your transition, uh, you know, slightly easier. And then oh no, that hundred percent. Um. I also have family from my mom's side here in Manila. So not just my dad, but my, uh, my titas are also here to um, let me stay at their place. So it's technically mm-hmm. four, but yeah. So primarily QC and Alabang. All right. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Or it's basically, you know, the opposite ends of the spectrum, you know, QC, uh, Taga North, Yon, and then of course Alabang. We all know that it's the holy grail for so south peeps true yep and you know it's crazy like yung Atenea, it's qc based 
but there's yeah. so many so many south peeps who yeah. study in Ateneo like that's crazy usually they yeah go for La Salle or just you know yeah. schools close by uh the the like area. Or, yeah yeah Alabang area you know if if it's if it's Ateneo that you want to go to you'll do anything and everything yes. that you can you know that's true that's true yeah it's just amazing like though uh-huh yeah definitely so yeah the south contingent here in Katep is very strong and I miss y'all yeah. like don't True. don't get me wrong for all the conyoness you know the like parang <laughs> it was annoying <laughs> hey. at first at first it was like man can you, I, I can't agree. stand it anymore but now as with anything in the pandemic you don't know what you've got till it's gone I miss I it now you know <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. The like parangs are actually very well missed, even yes. on my end. You know, it feels so weird to say it on my own. Yeah, like it, parang. When you say it like in the Zoom screen, it hit different. Like nothing compares to saying it live. True. <laughs> uh huh. Nothing so... compares to saying it live and hearing your friend, especially in an orals. You know, Ooh. trying to uh. weave their way through <laughs> Philo and Theo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, definitely agree. And I myself am not spared from saying that holy phrase, you know, a couple of times. So, yeah. Like <laughs> horror. Yep. Dang, I missed that. <laughs> yes, You me brought too. up some repressed memories there, Jake. I know. Like, that's how much we miss life as it was. But hey, we got to move on, man. We got to continue moving. But we're going to get those right back. I guarantee it. 100%. Yeah. Uh-huh. First thing so, I'm going to be doing when this pandemic is over is actually going to Ateneum. I just want to walk there. Yeah. Straight up, I miss it. I miss home, bro. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Uh. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, We're just reminiscing a little bit, you know. I mean, this episode is like just, you know, how to move from one place to another. But at the same time, it's just trying to relish your memories because that's what we do here in the podcast, you know. Like, even though this is a new field for me, I'm just trying to recreate some stories, relive some stories here and there, and just try to look forward to some things that we, we can do again as soon as this whole madness is all said and done. So, um, let's get on with our next question. So, obviously, man, you've seen mm-hmm. both sides of the Philippines, the busy city life of QC, Alabang, yeah. maybe even Makati. I wouldn't be surprised if you've been there several times <laughs> i work there <laughs> oh yeah definitely so you've been in that side and then you've been in the more peaceful side like cdo like yeah uh, a lot of uh trees you know i'm sure you live close to the i'm sure you've, you've uh, paid a visit to the beach once in a while yeah so you can see the stark difference right between the two very uh types of philippines that we have so, you know, what do you prefer, man? Do you prefer the busy, hustle-bustle life of m Or do you prefer the peace and quiet, slow-paced life of CDO? Mm. Well, if I were to choose work-wise, I would prefer it here because, you know, we make more money here. Of course. But of course. Um, <clears throat> eventually, along the line, if I were planning to settle down, I'd probably go back to CDO or probably mm-hmm. move to Cebu because... It just hits different when you stay at a place that you've been, your friends, your family's there. You're already quite established compared to uprooting your entire self and like starting a new here. Mm-hmm. Um, although I am open to staying here as well. Mm-hmm. But somewhere along the line, it would be nice to at the very least go back for like a year or two and then yeah. come back. To just relive what it's just like to be in the city there. Yeah, that's um, pretty interesting. Do you want to know the difference between uh, CDO and Manila, Jake? Because I can tell you. Oh, or sure. Or is that a question along the way? Oh, sure, sure. Definitely. No, because I've been uh, I've been to some provinces before, like Cebu, Davao, um, yeah. Bohol. So I pretty much kind of get the gist. But I haven't been to CDO in particular. So I guess maybe you could uh, educate some of our listeners who haven't been to CDO and who plan to go to CDO like in the near future. Yeah, yeah. Just tell us what's up, you know. I got you. So, I used to travel a lot. 
uh, between CDO and Manila. Um, every you remember um, that week, the charter charter week, Jake, where we had like a week off. Yeah. So what my agreement with my mom was every time I'd have like a really long weekend, like five seven days, mm-hmm. I would fly home to CDO and back to Manila after. Yeah. So the first thing that I noticed, like, that asked the first thing. I noticed when coming off the plane is that the air smells so much different compared to the air in Manila. Like, I can honestly smell the difference between the air and when you take a deep breath in, it feels like, feels so good. Like, yeah. there's actually nutrients coming inside your body. Like, there's more oxygen because there's more trees as well. Compared to coming um, back to the metro, it's like kind of polluted. But hey, that's not necessarily bad but it's not necessarily yeah. good either but you know yeah um so uh, traffic is more or less the same recently uh, but back in 2015 2015 it was way different um there were less cars less people there but the more like the longer that i've stayed in manila i think also because my province has also been progressing so we take those in a sense mm-hmm. um so I'm really glad that there's progress, but I'm not glad that there's more traffic. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, in CDO, definitely way cheaper. Um, you can pretty much survive on like 150 for the entire day, while in Manila, that's like one meal. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Oh, and the like the thing that I miss the most out of everything from CDO is it takes 30 minutes to get from one point to where you want to go. Like, maximum 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, um, my from my house to, like, a mall uptown, that would be 30 to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. But, um, that would be all. Like, that's just, what? For one way trip, it's just mm-hmm. one hour. Is that uh, like for, on a weekday or on a weekend? Um, on a weekday, on a weekend, in a rush hour, it goes up to an hour one way. But you never go above an hour. It's like insane. Oh, man. My favorite thing. Oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Tell me about it. Whoa. <laughs> I mean... Traffic here is like it's expectedly bad, but like one hour. Yeah. No, like how far is your oh. house to the mall? Like from QC to like Pasig or something? Or I'd say okay, no, no man. I think it's around since again there is a pretty sm- yeah, it's considerably yeah. smaller than Manila, right? That's true. That's true. Um, I think from the mall to my house, it's around 10 to 15 kilometers. Mm. So I don't know how far that is. So it's probably Alabang to Pasig or Makati to Pasig or something like that. Yeah. Or Alabang to Pasig, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but still. And that like, takes around 30 minutes, yeah. Like, on a weekday? You can, on a weekday, on rush hours, less than an hour. Like you can only get to that uh, speed or that time when you're on Angkas or one of those uh, ride sharing apps with motorcycles because yeah, at yeah. least they can weave through traffic right but here mm-hmm. you take public transport it's fast you take um, cars it's also fast mm-hmm. same but yeah uh, recently I've seen the stories of my friend that they've been they've been complaining about traffic so mm. before the pandemic yeah. so yeah. I'm pretty sure that might have changed but we take it still yeah. It's, it's something that, you know, Metro Manila can never replicate unless oh, yeah. you live close by. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, you know it's crazy, dude. Um uh-huh. you'd think that uh the current situation would ease traffic and all. But yo, like oh, no. I uh I've been out a couple of times, just a couple of times long, like you know, from here to Pasig or here to Artigas or Mahati, yeah. even Alabang. Bro, the traffic is still crazy. Like Yeah, the traffic is still crazy. It's like bumper to bumper live, still. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Where do you live again? Uh, QC. Your QC. Yeah. 
Like, dude. He's still in the circle the, of everything. Yeah. Poster. Like, I'm sure you remember the flyover, right? The yeah. Katipunan flyover. Yeah. Dude, on a Saturday, there's like so many trucks still. Really? Yeah. It's like, uh, he's still not affected or anything, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, business is still going on as usual, so. Yeah, that just sucks about the pandemic, dude. Business actually has to go on. Yeah, that's true. But that's still crazy, man. Like, your traffic comparison. Like, I mean, that's a topic in itself, dude. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a topic very much in itself. Mm-hmm. But I guess, you know, besides the traffic, what other noticeable... Well, besides the traffic and the clean air, mm-hmm. what other noticeable differences like do you, not, do you notice between, like, the city and provincial setup? Mm-hmm. I don't know much. Those are the ve- uh, like my biggest thing would probably be my favorite restaurants aren't here. Oh yeah. So yeah. it's it's kind of hard to adjust because you're always looking for like a taste of home and that's true. When you're like in a new place, you're trying to look for something similar or as close to it as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, although that's not really a big difference, but like let me think. Big difference would be. There's definitely way less green here. Um, yeah. Are there skyscrapers like in CDO? <laughs> oh, come on, Jake. Don't be <laughs> like that. What? Why are you like that? <laughs> of course there are. But we don't reach the heights of like the 20th, 25th floor. We go up the 10th, 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, our central business district isn't as established yet. So... Um, that's like a priority. Um, we're not clumped up in a CBD, but rather they're placed out for different venues. Yeah. Um, I know a solar panel is in upstate. I know um, the PPOs are near a nightclub or something like that. And then there's just like not one like compared to Makati, like that entire thing CBD, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's also a very big difference. How um, we're not really clumped up, but rather distributed uh, to different places, which might be an inconvenience to some. But I think that it's very nice considering that uh, if we are like going to be clumped up into one CBD, it's going to cause a lot of traffic for everyone around. So because yeah. it's spaced out, I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. All right, I get it now. So, so basically, like it's evenly distributed, like spacing wise. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty much. Except we have like five malls in front of each other, like different mm. malls, and they're in mm. front of each other. Oh, so that's right. where all the traffic comes from. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can imagine. But yo, I mean, that's those are some very interesting uh, differences right there. Like, you think na uh, every city is the same, one and the same, but you know, uh, based on what I'm hearing, you know, CDO is a whole different. Uh, it's in a whole different league of its own compared to like uh, Manila or even Cebu because you know how Cebu is starting to become yeah, Cebu's another becoming metro also another Manila yeah mm-hmm. oh um, I forgot to mention it's easier to go um, to vacation spots from CDO because um, oh. in CDO we're known for our white water rafting and beaches. Yeah, and, but yeah. What's close to it is um, Bukid Nun and Davao, mm-hmm. um, which are like four to six hours away long. And then I think in around Bukid Nun, it's like Dahilayan. Um, yep. Asia's longest zip line. So it's easier to go to different places and like have vacations there or go far to farther places than it is in Manila because mm-hmm. if you're in QC, you have to travel like quite a, f- uh, quite a ways away just to get to Tagaytay. Hell, even Antipolo. Mm. Just to get there. Yeah, um, I know. It takes so long. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, I feel like it's easier to just, you know, say, screw it. I'm gonna bring my work with me. It's time to take a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Compared to when you have to plan it, um, there are more opportunities for impromptu vacations rather than um, here. Yeah. 
here in Manila. So that's also mm. one of the things that I miss. Mm. So you can just like bounce anytime. Like you don't need to yeah. do this extra planning. Ek, ek. <laughs> no, at the very least that you'd have like a, a day or two to plan and then just say, mm-hmm. screw it, let's go. Mm-hmm. Hit up as many friends as you can and then, okay, I found this resort that we can go to. This is the X amount and we just split. That's it. Wow, that must be really easy, hassle-free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can only wish to experience something like that, but you know, I guess... Yeah, you, should come, you should come over. Mm-hmm. You should oh, come yeah. over uh, the next time, you know? Yeah, if that's the plan. well-established, I'll hit you up with, uh, yo, Jake, from the CDO, I got you. Yeah, definitely, man. Like, let's make it happen. <laughs> For sure. Mm-hmm. What else, Baba? I think I have one more. Oh, um... This is super... I don't know how to uh, properly articulate this, but time moves way faster here in Manila than in studio. Yes. yes. You're like, so right. Like, to any province that you go to, when you feel like you don't have to do anything, you feel like you have so much time. But here in Manila, parang even just going to a place has already consumed like one to two hours of your time. Mm-hmm. That's only one way. So, like, I feel like that is something that I will never get used to. Mm-hmm. Um, the time, the way the time flows here is like, you actually have to make every second count. Yeah. I you gotta, you gotta get your head in the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. feels like an hour. <laughs> At the rate that we're True. going. I agree. That's so insane. Like, I didn't know the difference. Uh, I didn't know that I've adjusted to the time here in Manila. When I got home, I felt like I had so much time. Mm-hmm. Like, my, I'd have to keep on asking my friends, Oh, where, where are they? Where are um, What time are you going to meet? And then I keep on forgetting that. Because everything is, like, super close. I'm usually really early for things now. Oh. And when we go back home, I have to wait for them for, like, 30 to an hour. Just so that I can see them, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the re- the reasoning is, why are you in a rush when things are pretty close here, Manila boy? <laughs> like yeah. I get I get um, flack for that, you know. Uh, yep, that's what the city can do to any of us. Like we think things have to happen real quick, but deep down, uh, these provinces are telling us, "Yo, dude, relax. Uh, you have a lot of time on your plate." True. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a very interesting difference that you mentioned. Because, you know, you know what they say, right? Time is a social social construct. So social construct. Yeah. That's a prime example of that, you know? Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yep. Um, I guess, you know, let's talk naman about some of the languages. Because you know how in the Philippines you have a hundred of or hundreds of thousands of unique dialects and i don't know why hindi to pinapa ngalagaan you know i feel like every yeah. uh city every province every tribe can you know stand out cuz i personally want to get to know these uh dialects these unique languages myself but you know the fact that mm-hmm. we're only exposed to english filipino like you know, no disrespect to the Philippine language, but I gusto ko talaga matuto na mga ibang lingwahe, you know, especially from you know Visayas, Mindanao area. So I don't know about you, but yeah, I know. Have you been exposed like uh, to certain dialects that are very unique and yours only, or at least your provinces only? Oh, um, well, I have been very much exposed to different dialects in the Philippines because I dorm. So we are a cesspool yes. of provincianos, right? Yes. So we'd have someone from Ilo, Ilo Ilongo. Uh, mm-hmm. So they'd be speaking Ilongo, Ilocano. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd have someone speaking Waray. And, you know, because we're mostly, the people there are from the Visayas and the Mindanao. So we have a, a sort of common ground in Visaya. But also, um, because we have Visaya words in their uh, languages or in their dialects, we have a bit of understanding that comes with it. Um, mm-hmm. So, 
it would always be like a very like pleasing aspect as to whenever I came home to the dorm because people would always uh, tamba in the lobby and then they'd be like speaking in the dialects and it would be a pleasure to listen especially to the uh, those who speak Elongo because you know when they're ma- w- the way that they speak is so soft so nice so mahimhim yeah. Him. yeah and you wouldn't even know if uh, they're mad at you or not mm-hmm. crazy no um yeah so I speak three different languages uh, English uh, Filipino Tagalog and Bisaya um yeah uh, so it was kind of difficult transitioning in the sense na I had to get my mind used to thinking Tagalog quite a bit here mm-hmm. um and I had to lessen the amount of times that I spoke Bisaya because I had to be inclusive of other people as well unless I knew that the people around me were Bisaya yeah um so I have this one memory where in the language barrier was such an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I was in a math class, right? Yes. And then this was in first year. I was like... So long ago, to myself. <laughs> yeah, so long ago. 2015. 20, imagine, Six years. we're 2021 now. Holy cow. Yeah, so anyway, um, I spoke to myself and I said, I don't know and then people were looking at me. Apparently, I said it out loud, and they were like, "Libog." And then I, f- and then someone told me, uh, "Libog in Tagalog means you are turned on or horny." I'm like, oh no 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 no, that's not how you do it. And in Bisaya, "Libog" means you're confused. <laughs> uh, I'm from I'm from Mindanao. That's my bad. <laughs> oh my god. Then they laughed at me, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, <laughs> yep, this is definitely going to be an issue." 100%. So, yeah, uh, there are a lot of Tagalog sounding words mm-hmm. that are from the Bisaya dialect. And I'm like, is this the right word to use for this context? Mm. And and then, um, uh, so what we call our kumot in CDO, like for us in general, would be um, habol. Mm-hmm. But habol here means like not sharp, right? Habol. I think. No, it means uh, you're trying to catch up. Oh, chase. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Habol. Like. <laughs> yeah. Habol, yeah. So, yeah. So there's like, uh, you're trying to reconcile your Bisaya self with your trying to figure out how to speak properly in Tagalog. And that was mm-hmm. very challenging. Like it got easier as like you interact I, I as I interacted with more people. Um so I'm just really glad that the Ateneo community is very diverse. Like we have people who primarily speak English and primarily speak Filipino or Tagalog. Mm-hmm. And then um there would be the Konyos. Yes. Who speak both. Um yeah, but then it would be yeah, so it would be great. Like, you wouldn't know who you're going to speak mm-hmm. to. And then you can just keep on, I guess, improving or building up your confidence in speaking that dialect. So that's the thing that I did. Like, I had to speak to as many people as possible in Tagalog. Mm-hmm. Um, to build up the confidence so that, you know, if ever I will stuttered or something, I can figure out a way to bounce back. So, Yeah. The language barrier wasn't as bad as I thought because if ever you can just default to English and people would always understand, especially in Ateneo. Um, but yeah, uh, trying to find the right words was my issue hmm. back in college. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, man. Like, because uh, you know, like I said earlier, like, yeah, Filipino is like our main language, but there's so many more dialects than that. And, you know, language in general is such a difficult, complex topic. So there are some words that have this meaning. There such, that same word may have a different meaning. So it's definitely a huge uh, adjustment phase, you know, especially trying to learn and unlearn stuff. But yeah, I mean, I <laughs> look at you though. Like, 
you're able to manage and pull through and that's what's important at the end of the day yeah that is uh-huh super off topic but you know what was your flc like since you were, were in the subject oh. of language i took french oh oh what was yours uh spanish <laughs> oh you did yeah I don't even remember any of my FLCs anymore. Yeah, I just know. Uh, much tapel and Koma Sava. Koma yeah. Sava is how are you? And mm-hmm. you reply with uh, Sava Bian. Meaning, I'm well. Wow. Yup. Wow. Look at that, guys. Like, we have a multilingual <laughs> speaker over here. He knows True. English, Tagalog. Uh, what I, uh, I forgot. Sorry. What I Bisaya. No, Bisaya. Sorry about that. Bisaya. Uh, yeah. And a little bit of French. Wow, that's four languages right it's there, true. guys. Good stuff. Four languages right there. You stand a multilingual king. Yep. No nope. choice but to stand, man. True. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking of, you know, adjusting, so of course language is one thing. But what are some of the other things you needed to adjust or you need to like uh improve on? Or just completely unlearn and learn uh, the oh. moment you step foot on Cervini, I think. That was the name of your dorm. Yeah. Yeah, or it just was. anywhere in uh, Metro Manila soil. So what were some of the things you needed to overcome? Like from day one until, you know, the last day. Or even now because, you know, you're technically still working here. So yeah. what are like some of the things you needed to do and not do? Oh, okay. So first things first is traffic. Apparently, I have to plan two hours ahead for the time that I have to be there just to make sure that I get there on time. Mm -hmm. Um, Back in the province, I'd always go for like... um, I remember my class was at 8. So I would wake up at 7.15, get on a jeep, and get to my school at 8 a.m. sharp. Mm -hmm. And that was it. But if I were to do that here, I would end up arriving at 9, 10, 15 instead of 8 if I left mm-hmm. at 7.15 yeah. 7.30 um, yeah so that was very big uh, back in college I didn't have that problem because I stayed in the dorm yeah so Cervini UD are practically inside of Ateneo oh they are inside of Ateneo yeah yeah so like what happens is that um, dormers would frequently be late because they're complacent but just because it's close doesn't mean mm-hmm. You're never going to be late. Um, coincidentally, I think that the dormers, like for me, or, or at the very least for me, I was the most, usually the latest guy in class because I was complacent that I lived too far close. Mm-hmm. When my alarm rang for 7.50, for 7.50 for my 8 a.m., I'd go snooze once, snooze twice, and then wake up at 8 and then just run to Bell or wherever my classes would be at that time. In Pambahay, of course. Yeah, that's the one advantage you guys have over us, you know. <laughs> I mean, the only traffic that the only traffic y'all got to overcome is the the lost freshman, you know. True. Yeah. If you Not guys even just that. If you guys don't know, that's like a running theme in Atenea. Like first yeah. years they clump together in blocks like where the heck are we going? <laughs> True. They they um they stock up in the middle of Sequoia, in Gonzaga, um, important places to pass through, and we'd have to be like, Freshies, move. Go there. Figure it out. You're blocking it for everyone. And that yeah. is definitely something that I missed too. Mm-hmm. The lost Freshie. I can't <laughs> believe we were the lost Freshies once, Jake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, even though, like, I've been in Manila for longer than you. Like, there are still moments I get lost <laughs> in LS. Like, I'm not, I'm not exempted from. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I definitely had my moments that where I was lost as hell. But you know what happens. <laughs> True. LS is practically really big too. Not even the home, country not even the homegrowns can say that. Oh, I know this place by heart. True. Mm-hmm. Scary. Yeah. Damn, I miss LS, dude. Yeah, me too, man. I really need to go back. When was the last time you went? 
Uh, well, you know, actually, I'm we're quite lucky because you know, uh, they hold Sunday masses there. Uh huh. So oh. yeah, what we do, we'd sign up so that we can reserve for like first and third Sundays. So once in a while, I'd head to just to head to Bell, but that's about it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. The last time I went was in 2020. Um, I went to Arete mm-hmm. with the girl that I was dating before, and then we just looked at and scrolled through Ateneo, and then gave her a tour of what my college life was like. Yeah. Now I miss it. That's the last time I've been there. Man, that's tough. Yep. It's been that long, but you know, who knows? <laughs> True. Who knows? Uh, we're we're going to be back. We're going to be back sooner than you know it. I agree. Uh-huh. Eventually, you'll be back, bro. Yep. So, aside from being complacent and all, what are other uh, adjustments that, or not really adjustments, it's like more of uh, hurdles, challenges that you needed to overcome? Mm-hmm. I mean, you were quite lucky because, you know, you're a dormer, so you kind of yeah. had your way around the campus, you know? Didn't have to beat I did. the Katipunan traffic. traffic. Yep. Yeah. You didn't oh, have to worry about biggest... parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I had to get to adjust to was the nightlife here in Manila. It's oh. crazy. Yes. Um, cause just to give a brief or background or context, I am raised um, in a Christian school in a Christian family. <laughs> my 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 parents. Um, I always had the curfew. Um, whenever I drank alcohol, it would always be supervised. You know, I, I I was I really had this halo going out of Cagayan de Oro, <laughs> but the moment that I got to Manila, there were chinks in it because uh, back in um, when you we were first years, um, our org Arsa had. Uh, a welcoming for the dormers. Yeah. And yeah. we'd have like, uh, sort of like our their, their very own Orsem, like an Arsa Orsem. Yes. So, at the end of it all, we'd all go to get drinks and stuff like that. And the atmosphere was completely different. It was my first time going into um, a bar, seeing people drink, like, that I don't know. And it was Pretty insane. Mm. It was fun to see, and I was scared. Like that, I was really scared because like people were laughing really loud. Like I didn't know what it was like to properly be intoxicated around friends. Because like I said before, whenever I took alcohol, it would always be supervised by my parents or mm-hmm. other people that I know. Mm-hmm. So like completely unsupervised drinking is very. Um, shocking to a 16 year old you know mm-hmm. so it was fun it's something that I will never get used to um, no matter how many times that I go out go out with friends mm-hmm. um, seeing how crowded the place can be um, seeing what people do in like the darkness in the dark of night you know people always like a part of me will always be freaked out and amazed like this can never, or this will barely happen in the province of ever. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Yo, you had me at the whole Christian race. Like I totally did not see that coming, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. I was a very good boy back in high school. Oh, very, yeah. very model student. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can relate too, because you know, I don't, I barely do nightlight stuff, but. You know, once in a while, you know, when the when the moment arises, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. about to go off. <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. You gotta release some of that pent up energy, you know. Yep. So it's very fun. That's something that, like, there are clubs and bars back in CDO, but they don't necessarily have the same atmosphere as the clubs that you have and bars here. Yeah. They're completely different. Oh yeah. Um. So what my friends and I have resorted to is just buy drinks and then drink at someone else's house instead. Mm. That's more intimate, more fun, um, less chances of any of your friends like 
getting dragged home with someone that we don't know, which is scary. Yeah, you know? that's scary. That's scary. And you're yeah. you're in an actual home, so that's yeah another you know <laughs> reassurance. Another that, you bonus. Know. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. So yeah, um, yeah, the nightlife is very interesting, at the very least. Um, yeah, but I would say that there are more places to see in Manila because mm-hmm. you know the famous landmarks. Um, you can always travel to Tagaytay. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Pinto Art Museums. There's National Museums. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have trains in CDO. <laughs> Yun lang. Yeah. So it's always uh, our public transport would be jeeps, like 100%. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Oh, but since we're in the subject of bars, you know, what was, what was the best one that you've been to? You know, four years. Best one here? in my four years. Oh, I got you. Um, if you were with your group of friends and you were just hanging out long, I would recommend Pop Up. Pop Up yeah. has their own benches. Um, has mini stores, has potato corner for the love of God. That's all that you need. Your pulutan will be potato corner. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pop up is really good uh, in terms of like the atmosphere is more intimate compared to somewhere like Lankwai or Walrus. But um, Lankwai had the best food, mm-hmm. Walrus had the best chicken skin. Um, Papos had the best drinks just because they put in a little something mm-hmm. there. Wait, do you remember? There's a bar. Or there was a bar in front of McDo before. I forgot what it was called. Drews. Oh. There you go. Drews. <laughs> Drews. Drews mm-hmm. was the place that you would go to if you wanted to get messed up. <laughs> Because they added um, bitsin in their drinks that will get oh, you man. Tama, like much faster. <laughs> like if you wanted to have a good time with friends, you would go there and then you wouldn't remember it the next day. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that that yeah, that that really hit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. Now the Drews that I know is somewhere along Katap Extension. I was like, this doesn't feel right at all. Because mm-hmm. I remember it was above Barton Blends and Walk mm-hmm. This Way. You remember those places, Jake? Yes, Walk This Way. I love that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Those are insane. I missed that. Yep. Yo, I'm sure I'm sure our guests right here, they're like uh, a little bit, not really cringing, but they're kind of shook because they're like, hey, why, is, why are these two guys talking about, you know, bars and stuff? Like, this is not the content we... Uh, sign up for yeah. every week, but you know I just had to bring it in there because you know it's that's part of our college, college life. life. Yeah, that's, that's college yeah. life right there for you. Yep. It was definitely part of it to celebrate um, passing an LT in accounting or or a difficult LT. You'd always mm-hmm. go out with your friends to drink. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll never 100%. forget. I'll never forget that one night I had in pop up. You know, with my high school uh, yeah. friends. You know that mini reunion we had. After yeah. that grad photo shoot, I think. Back in like 2018 or something like that. 2018, bro. Yeah. I still have my grad pictures, bro. Insane. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, I know, right? Kakamis, no? Like, sharing all these stories. Yeah. yeah. Makes you just want to go back, you know? <laughs> to simpler times when we didn't need masks 100%. and face shields and none of that extra True. stuff. It does, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff to say the least. So, um, that's pretty much a lot of stuff to take in. And I know we just mentioned the Katip side, but I'm sure if you guys are non-Atenean or if some of you live in other parts of the metro, I'm sure you have your own set of bars, uh, hangout spots that you guys remember. True. So, you know, if you want to just mention them down, uh on the chat or after listening to this episode uh, you always have our fb group and even the comments below every post go ahead you know share your uh amazing 
unforgettable and maybe even infamous stories that you'll you know cherish for life you know <laughs> yeah i agree mm-hmm. 100%. for sure so i don't know i guess one last difference like or one last uh i don't know change of scenery so of course you have your mm-hmm. dorm life you have your bar life so is there any other stuff that kind of stood out or you needed to just make an adjustment so that you uh keep in pace with other yeah. people who are like more used to the city or other uh provincianos who have adjusted already yeah so the biggest thing that i discovered between um Cagayan and manila is that in Cagayan, everyone knows everyone um at one point it would always be like oh um, this person is dating this person, but mm. then this person is dating the ex of that same person. Oh. So everyone knows everyone. Like literally, if you say, oh, well, it's probably my relative. Mm-hmm. It, it's like a really small um, place that people would actually know each other. And then here in Manila, it's like super big. Like, yeah. Like you, like I feel like there's more freedom here in Manila because you aren't really limited because uh what people see and what they can tell like your relatives and uh, things like that or people you may know but yeah um, one of the things that I had or the, uh, that I was grateful for when I transferred here to Manila was like <clears throat> before coming to before taking the entrance test in Ateneo mm-hmm. I went to a review center um, for UP called Brain Train yeah. and like I made a group of friends from there and Coincidentally, all of us, if not most of us, passed in Ateneo and uh, UB. Mm. So we all, so the people in my review center, we all chose Ateneo over UB. And yeah. <laughs> I had this group of friends that uh, were already there waiting for me instead of uh, me figuring out who I was going to be friends with. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really cool because I was the only person coming from my school. Um, I think I'm the only one that's left my school in over like what? Five to ten years for college. Oh, really? In Manila. Yeah, the people would prefer to stay in CDO because they their main reasoning is I'm used to it and there's less traffic here. Yeah. So that's wow. something that I'm really grateful for. Mm-hmm. That um, I had this group of friends that I could rely on whenever I would miss home, and I could feel home in them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Tapos back in CDO, you always had to worry about your about this like facade that you had to put up in front of people because everyone knew everyone, right? Mm-hmm. So you always had to be on your like best behavior. And in Manila, I just learned that you know. You can be anyone. People don't know people. You can be anyone you yeah. want. <laughs> Anybody you exactly. want. Exactly. So just be yourself, bro. Like mm-hmm. I kind of learned that late. Like stop caring about what others think because yes. you're probably never going to meet them again. Just oh yeah. You. Oh yeah. Like hundred oh, yeah. percent. Because back in the province, you would see one person today and then you would see them again next day. It was so weird for me. Mm-hmm. Like have so many acquaintances and they'd be like, oh. So you yesterday, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. It's different now. But here, it's like, it would probably take like what? Over three to four months before I would see you again. Yeah. So just genuinely be you, dude. Like, that's something that I learned along the way. And it was something that I had to come to terms with. Because mm-hmm. I realized I didn't have to put on a facade anymore for people. Just to get them to like me. Oh yeah. Definitely. 100%. Bro, why didn't you say that earlier? The whole you're the only one who moved out. I f- <laughs> I just <did laughs> ask, forgot about it. You know, uh-huh. um, I didn't think it was a big deal up until I realized that I'm the only one from my school who ever who transferred Whoa. to the ver- at the very least to Ateneo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see that, guys. That's what I mean by thriving, man. Like he didn't just survive, you know, Manila because <laughs> anyone can do that, but. I mean, this guy over here, he made the most out of his opportunity. He took a big ass leap of faith, you know. Imagine True. being the only one who said, you know, CDO is nice and all, but let's see what I can do in the big city. And that's exactly what Mika did. And 
true enough i mean of course you know i'm sure you had your own mess ups we all do but it hit it, different oh, definitely because you know you're from the province so i'm sure uh it's a lot different when you make those mistakes that i would make you know but like i said you know you're the only one from your town who moved here you're the only one in that review center who's not from any of the major schools in manila yeah exactly. and you went out and you have that large diploma to hang on your room true i still haven't hanged it. it's still here it's still in my my blue box <laughs> with my with the with the yeah i need to get that frame thanks for reminding me jake oh yeah oh yeah you should because that's like a big ass achievement but yeah it definitely is. like that's some inspiring and sorry my, for my french here guys but that's some inspiring ass shit right there like true <laughs> being the only one from your province to make it big in the city like that's something to applaud and you know uh yeah palakpakan naman tayo dyan, mga Yay, you know, bros and sisters friends. i mean this guy uh he's seen it all he's experienced all that and uh, look where he is now. So, like I said earlier, to all my listeners who may not be from uh, the NCR, because I see you guys. I see my demographics. Like, there's some people from Laguna, some from uh, the Visayas and Mindanao region. So, to all my listeners from those areas, um, of course, walang pilitan. Like, I'm sure uh, if you guys are, you know, happy to be in the province, why not? Like, uh, like you said, you know, less traffic fresher air who wouldn't want that but if you're the type who wants to challenge yourself see what i can do get out of my comfort zone conquer the big city i highly encourage it you know even if there's this uh pandemic you know that even that shouldn't stop you of course do things more safely and all that follow protocols but if you want to conquer the city if you want to ch- you know change your life just like what this guy over here did by all means be my guest and you know it's gonna be an experience you will never forget right <laughs> true 100 percent. like mm-hmm. a lot of my best moments were in college and my worst but you know that's part of college eh? yeah you have your highs and lows mm-hmm. you, like you learn the most about yourself i feel like i've learned the most a lot of myself in, in college yeah for sure. what i was good at what i was really bad at mm-hmm. so like yeah yeah for sure. So do I regret I, it? I, I, 100% I don't do it. Yes. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I would oh, yeah. transfer from CDO to Manila any day of the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And knowing you, I'm sure you would. So I'm sure I gave my yeah. little monologue to those who want to uh, adjust, you know, from the province to the city. But who am I to give advice, right? Because I've never experienced such <laughs> a transitional phase in my life, you know? The closest thing was... Yeah living in Ilocos for about three weeks for this uh, field work uh, oh. course that I had for my specialization slash minor. But still, that's just three weeks. You had to endure four years. So who am I to give advice? So yeah. we got to hear it from the man himself. So Miko, what is your advice to some of my listeners? Uh, and this doesn't just have to be provincial listeners. Huh? This can be from Metro Manila listeners who want to transition you know to the province life or even abroad like mm-hmm. what is your advice to those who just want a change in scenery is it worth taking the risk is it worth taking that leap of faith and mm-hmm. you know despite the struggles is it still worth overcoming despite the many things they'll have to endure uh from that yeah. day on yeah i got you no worries so uh it i'm i'm gonna preface this with uh but it's very different from person to person. Um, what your wants and what your needs might be different as of the moment. But like, um, if you feel like moving out or coming into the province is something that might help your wants and needs, then by all means, go for it. If you want to challenge yourself or if you want a quiet little place, but like, there is nothing that's going to stop you from doing that. Um, the only thing that matters is... Um, please be open with regards to the culture that's um, happening around the place that you're going to. Um, it's going to be different from one place to the next. Uh, people are, might be more open or might be more closed off in the province. It also depends on where you're planning to go. Mm-hmm. So 
at the very least be respectful. Um, for your challenges, I feel like with this this goes without saying uh, the challenges that you're going to be facing is probably going to make you a better person in the end. So if you feel like you can take it and if it's something that you really want, by all means go for it. Uh, yep. So transitioning into the into Metro Manila or transitioning out of it, what you definitely need is a good support system. Um, mm-hmm. Find a group of friends that you can always talk to. Um, find a group of friends that will remind you what it's like to be home and f- try to find comfort in these friends so that you won't really feel out of place when you're in somewhere new. Uh, yeah, I think that's mostly it. If you are interested in moving out or transitioning in uh, you just have to have this open mindset to the environment around you learn about the people before pushing your own agenda or your um, prejudices because that's very important to throw away when you're when you're at a different place you have to be open to the newness of things rather than being closed off and being in your own box because you wouldn't really get to experience the place in itself if you are boxed in you know so yeah, yeah. yeah as much as possible just enjoy the place that you're going to. Oh, yeah. At the very least, make sure before you transfer, you, you've you been there before at least once. Because yes. if you have to understand that you are potentially going to be living there for like, what? One, two, three years. More, maybe more. If you are going to like move like quite a bit of a big part of your life to go into somewhere else and you aren't comfortable there, that is something that you have to take into consideration because mm-hmm. it isn't something that's for everyone. Um, yeah, There are some people that would prefer to remain in the metro because that's what they're used to or in the provinces. So my advice is always, always try to spend at least a month or two weeks in the place that you're going to be. Spend it in a place where you see yourself living realistically, not in an Airbnb, a hotel, or a condo. Spend it where you can move around, enjoy, um, see yourself thriving rather than like looking at it from a different perspective because you are touristas. Yeah. So that's yeah. my biggest advice for, ever, for someone. Always, always check out the place that you're planning to move into. See the culture. See things that uh, you wouldn't necessarily find on a Google search. Ask locals what's nice to do here. And yeah, that's it. What's their favorite thing about the the Mm -hmm. places that they're at? That's it. Mm -hmm. Yo, that was such a very interesting tip that you gave. The whole, hindi ka na turista, but you're like gonna be a resident of that certain place. That's actually so true. Because I think that's some mistakes that uh, people who move make they think now. Oh, I'm. This is just like the tourist life. It should be easy. But then, when you like stretch the months and years, like it's quite difficult now. So yeah, actually, it's pretty yeah. interesting. I never thought of that before. The whole see it muna for a couple of weeks, months, and make sure you do it with someone that you trust. Because if you do it alone, it's gonna be very difficult. So, yeah. If you have someone by your side, whether your uh, relatives or your parents or something like that. That would really help as well. So, yeah, amazing stuff, man. Like, those are some very valuable and important tips that some of my listeners can definitely, you know, take into account. And maybe even me, if I decide to move out of here, you know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I got you, Jake. You can just message yeah. me if you need help mm-hmm. with anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anything, we're just waiting for this pandemic to end. I mean, we don't know when, but... I agree. <laughs> Or who knows? You might just be waiting for me to get back fully vaccinated, but we'll see. <laughs> I agree, dude. I agree. But yeah, um, those are just some of the tips that I'm gonna make sure to c- follow. You know, once I'm ready to get out this <laughs> this roof that I'm living in. True. But yeah, it should be exciting. So eventually, yes, eventually, guys, do know that we're gonna leave this nest. Uh, because you know, as Filipinos, right, we have this tendency of living in our parents' home for how parents. long? Like, there's that running generalization. 
but you know you gotta understand that there will come a point in time where uh we're gonna leave this nest uh before you know it and uh yeah it looks like you're frozen right now bro <laughs> No, I'm I'm good. I'm here. I'm here. You okay. were frozen a bit for me, but we're back. We're back. <laughs> All right, we're back. But it's okay though because that pretty much concludes our show. So Mika, my man, thank you so much for hopping on the pod. Finally, you, after a couple of weeks, months, it postponed. Uh, yeah, postponed. Do you call that postponed schedules? Delayed. Yeah, yeah delays. Schedules. We finally completed an EP. And the only thing we have to hope for now is my audio recorded because, you know, you know the man, <laughs> the internet here. And I hope it's recorded, you know? Yeah. Yep. Sure. So. That was very fun. Uh, yes, it was truly fun. And I'm, you know, happy to do this with you. And some of, some of the friends that I've met in college, it's really good to reconnect with y'all. And once again, the invitation is on. So if any of you guys want to hop on the spot, just message me, DM me. You know, we can work things out. So, uh, Mick, my man, thank you for being here. But before we go, do you have any plugs? Do you have any uh, <laughs> accounts or sites that my followers should oh. check out? Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at um, Nico, M-I-K-O underscore Aracid, A-R-A-C-A-D. And um, <clears throat> if there are any fresh grads out there, Send me your resumes. Ask Jake for my email. The yeah. company's hiring. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I heard you're a gamer too, dude. Like, what's your yes, sir? What's your Twitch gamer tab? Or, <laughs> what's your Twitch gamer tab? Oh, uh, my Twitch is uh, Kappa Decimo. That's K A P P A D E C I M O. Um, yeah, you can add me on Valorant at that hashtag GG Easy, and we can play games as many yes. times as you want. Yes. Shout yes. out to all the Dell bros and sisters out there who are also gamers. Hit me up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Special shout out to Oshu, who's a gamer himself. He was on the show. Yeah. Shout out to Josh. Yep. Way early on in the season or season one, but yeah. Shout out to all my gamer friends as well. So yeah, those are Amiga's plugs, and yeah, I can't wait to hop on Valo. I'm gonna definitely try that out. You should come. Oh come. yeah. Definitely. Uh, I'm down to play with you. Definitely, definitely. So we'll definitely try that out. But uh, those are Mika's plugs. So if you want to check me out, you guys know the drill. Do I have to say everything over again? Of course I do. Because, you know, that's how us professional speakers do. So for the pod, if you want to check me out, it is at JOAT underscore or JOAT.POD.DLRO. So once again, it is at JOAT.POD.DLRO. For the person on the mind, it is at Jake underscore DLRO. On Twitter, it is at under, it is at underscore del underscore row underscore. On Facebook, the man, it is facebook.com slash joat.pod.delrow. Or if you just want to search it on the search tab, it is Jacob All Trades with Del Row. By the way, a huge favor, guys, please join our Facebook group, the Del Bros and Sisters. So that is where we chit chat, talk, relax, and chill. And you know, post naman kayo, guys, because I'm the only one posting content. So if you guys want to. You know, share me your thoughts, insights. Why not? So, please do check us out on our FB Read. group. Uh, this podcast can be streamed, televised, viewed, and listened to on the following platforms. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Radio Public, Breaker, YouTube, and on Facebook Live. So, my man, we finally made it. Uh, if you guys forgot, yeah. or if you guys don't know, Miko asked me, how the heck did, did you talk for an hour? Well, this episode kind of proved that, if anything. Yeah, we yep. did. We did. We did it. Talked for more than an hour, Jake. Holy oh, yeah. cow. Oh, yeah. So, any last words before I officially close this pod episode? I am very, I am really, really sorry for all of the delays. But I hope uh, <laughs> to all the viewers out there, to the Dalbros and sisters, um, especially to the Athenians, I hope that we were able yes. to um, give you a blast from the past with this podcast. The oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. You, so, 
Uh, thanks, Mick, for that. And oh my gosh, I totally forgot. How could I forget? But it is Father's Day weekend. So how could I forget <laughs> to say that in the, my intro? But it's never better late than never. So happy Father's Day to our Dell Papas. <laughs> yeah, we're not just Dell bros and sisters, happy but we got our Dell, our Dell Papas or Dell daddies, whatever. Happy Father's Day to all the dads tuning in. Uh, that is my dream and i'm sure that is your dream as well Mika, to be the best dad that we could be but that's True. for i agree <laughs> i don't know the next 10 to 15 years we still got a whole life ahead of us but with True. that yep, yep definitely let's not get ahead of ourselves but with that being said i know i said a lot of things but that's a wrap y'all thank you for tuning in today on adele bros and sisters this is your one and only jake of all trades he is your one and only uh Mika or acid your provincial boy turned city man and we are True. both signing out hanggang sa susunod na usapan at chikahan see ya happy father's day and take care happy everybody happy father's day happy father's day to the single small mo- single moms out there too oh yeah definitely bye guys single parent moms yeah 100% mm-hmm. bye guys Bye.